This is Love Notes, Daily Devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. Our text today is 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verses 12 through 16. The previous section ended with the word Amen. Today's passage begins with the word Beloved, an address. It's kind of like how letters in the New Testament begin. First John, we might recall. Other places where the community of God's people are called beloved, and it's usually a starting point. So there's something new going on in this passage. Uh, scholars argue over whether this was added later after the beginning part of the verse, or whether there's a whole new thing going on, or or, or that there was a, a new challenge to the church that needed to be addressed. I'm not sure any of that matters. It's interesting, but what matters is what it says. Beloved, you who are loved by God, you blessed ones of God, you children of God, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. The first thing I notice here is that the letter is doing nothing to give us the idea that Christians should be able to avoid suffering. Challenges will come, suffering will happen, fiery ordeals, sounds pretty serious, are going to befall people who believe in Jesus. Don't act like it's something strange, because that's what it means, as this whole letter has said, to live in the context of a world that doesn't understand Jesus. We will, because of our faith, suffer, be tried, find difficult decisions to make. And that is the nature of things. We shouldn't ever believe that by believing in Jesus, we can somehow avoid, avoid all of the bad things that might happen. It's just not true. Whether that be small things like a little bit of ridicule for deciding not to go along with the group, or whether it be death itself. None of those things are avoided by faith. But in verse 13, it says, instead, instead of being surprised, Rejoice insofar as you share in Christ's sufferings. Now, in what follows here, there's a reflection on the difference between suffering for the self-inflicted things of this life, the things that happen because we're sinful or selfish uh, or just caught up in the evil of the world, and the suffering that we endure because we're following Jesus. These are two separate things. When I get a cold and my nose is sniffly, it's probably not correct to say I'm just bearing my cross. There's nothing about the sniffles or a little bit of time on the couch as I recover that is done so that Christ may be glorified. It's unpleasant, and you'll get through it, and the presence of Christ in the midst of that human suffering is something that gives us peace. But Peter here is calling us to think about how we suffer on behalf of Christ. So rejoice in so far as you are sharing in Christ's sufferings so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. Just as Jesus' own suffering was shown to be a step toward glory in the resurrection, when all comes in all, when the consummation of the kingdom dawns, when Jesus returns to establish the final reign of justice, then our glory in our suffering for Jesus will be revealed as something redemptive, something that made a difference, something that mattered. In verse 14, it says, if you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed. Because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting upon you. God will never abandon us when we suffer in the name of Jesus. The story of every martyr for the last 2,000 years bears witness to this. 
whether it be Saint Ignatius fed to the beasts, whether it be reformers who were tied to a stake and burned, whether it be those who suffered and pulled up short of death, who were imprisoned and beaten and mocked, all of them, all of them suffer with Christ and the Spirit of God rests upon them. That's how they get through it. In verse 15, it says, But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. A mischief maker. Lots of us do that, don't we? These aren't the things that will give you glory. God is not going to rest on you if you've brought upon yourself your own suffering. If you're a murderer and you go to prison or, or worse... That suffering is not suffering in the name of Jesus. If you are a thief and you get caught, uh, that suffering is not in the name of Jesus. If you're a criminal or a mischief maker, just trying to poke people and have your fun, this is not suffering in the name of Christ. Yet, it says in verse 16, if any of you suffers as a Christian, as one who bears the name of Christ, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. It is easy to be shamed in our culture, humanity in general. That's what we do. We shame people. We shame people to make ourselves feel better. We shame people to make people conform to the community as we have shaped it in our minds we shame people, but never suffer disgrace, it says. Do not be ashamed if you suffer and are mocked in the name of Jesus. Whether that be refusing to participate in a, I don't know, racist conversation at the water cooler. Whether that means that you refuse to go along with the bullying of some kid on the playground. And that happens even into adulthood, doesn't it? when you refuse to do that, and then everybody turns on you too. Maybe that means you stand up for someone or something that everybody else around you thinks you're nuts to stand up for. These are the times when our faith calls us to stand with Jesus, for Jesus, and as Jesus, and to know that we will not be suffering in vain. Even if those around us deride us and shame us, we will not be disgraced before God. And that is what's most important. The names of the martyrs should be on our lips, perhaps. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, stripped naked and hung by the Nazis, mocked by the guards who put him there. Martin Luther King Jr., shot by an assassin's bullet, mocked mocked for being a black man who called for justice. Countless men and women through the ages who have been mocked and shamed by the world, but who stand with the glory of God. And that's the call of faith. What will sustain you? The approval of the crowd or the glory of the Spirit? Let us pray. Lord, may we cling to your glory and your redemption found in Jesus Christ. May we cling to knowing that your glory is often shameful in the world. May we have the strength, Lord, to suffer in the name of Jesus, knowing that you suffer with us, for us, through us, and that you will redeem us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.